The Earth is the only planet man can ever call home. It is the only planet man can ever call home. Therefore, he must love and take care of it. This is the place where plants and animals thrive. Its atmosphere and its terrain providing what man needs in order to live. But in the name of development, we humankind have meddled with nature and slowly the nature started losing its balance. And we are facing the consequences of it in the form of global warming, climate change, etc. Realizing the importance of uh, protection of uh, nature and its uh, resources, many national and international organizations started working towards the conservation of nature and its uh, resources. Today, we are going to study about uh, one of uh, such international organization, uh, which is uh, championing the cause of uh, protection of uh, or conservation of nature and its uh, resources, that is IUCN, the International Union for Conservation of Nature. Officially, it is called as uh, International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources. Let's uh, take a glance at IUCN. The motto of uh, IUCN is United for Life and Livelihoods. This uh, IUCN was uh, uh, established on 5th October at the uh, Fontbeau of uh, France. And this was uh, uh, established uh, uh, by the UNESCO has spurred the representatives of governments and the conservation organizations um, then uh, signed a formal act. Then uh, this IUCN has came into existence. Uh, the initiative was set up, uh, uh, the new organization came from UNESCO and especially from its first uh, director general, the British bi uh, biologist, Julian Huxley. And the main focus of this IUCN is uh, nature conservation and biodiversity. Uh, its headquarters is um, located uh, in the town called Gland in Switzerland. Uh, it is the world's uh, oldest and uh, largest conservation organization with uh, almost uh, 1400 government and non uh, NGO members and uh, more than 16,000 uh, volunteer experts uh, in uh, 185 countries. Uh, IUCN's work is uh, supported by almost 1000 full-time staff uh, uh, in 45 offices and hundreds of partners in public, NGO and private sectors around the world. Uh, um, so it has widely connected and widely distributed organization. The mission of IUCN is to influence, encourage and assist global societies to conserve nature. The main mission is this. First one is to influence, uh, influencing the uh, global societies and encouraging the global societies and not only influencing and encouraging but assisting this global society to conserve nature. To ensure that any use of uh, natural resources is equitable and ecologically sustainable. That means whatever the resources are there, they uh, the aim of uh, this IUCN is they should be equitably shared between the global societies. Uh, this uh, uh, IUCN's work uh, uh, focuses on valuing and conserving nature ensuring effective and equitable governance of its use and deploying nature-based solution to global challenges in climate, food and development. So 
uh, it uh, insists, encourage, and assist. So we have uh, already discussed about this. Is next one is promotes conservation ecology to promote sustainable development uh, on sustainable basis. Uh, the third one is provides scientific based information on the status of species and subspecies at global level. So the IUCN plays a major role in um, uh, giving scientific based information on what are the species and subspecies present in global level. So it maintains a inventory of the status of species and uh, subspecies um, present in the uh, world. And it also provides information to guide action to conserve biological diversity. So what are the, um, uh, uh, it, it also provides information regarding what are the steps you have to take or the um, global societies or the governments should take uh, in order to conserve the biodiversity. So uh, these, uh, its experts, the IUCN experts are organized into six commissions um, dedicated for species survival. The first one is uh, environmental law, protected areas, social and um, uh, social and econ economic policy, ecosystem management, and education and communication. These are the six commissions. First one is Species Survival Commission. Second one, Environmental Law Commission. Uh, third, Protected Areas Commission. Social and Economic uh, Policy Commission is the fourth one. Ecosystem Management uh, and Education and Communication are the fifth and sixth consecutively. Next, what does IUCN do? Uh, uh, conserving uh, biodiversity is the uh, central to the mission of IUCN. To deliver conservation and sustainability at both the local level and at the global level, uh, what IUCN uh, does is it builds on its strengths in the following areas. These are the three areas. It builds on strength. First one is science. Second one is action. Third one is influence. The in the first one, science, eleven thousand experts setting global standards in their fields for a species extinction risks. So uh, they prepare uh, IUCN red list of threatened species. So to prepare this list or an inventory, uh, they set up global standards in their fields. Next is action. Hundreds of conservation field projects and activities all over the world from the local level to those involving several countries all aimed at sustainable management of biodiversity and natural resources. So all the projects, all the activities um, that were uh, that were uh, um, um, taken up by IUCN or aimed at sustainable management of whatever the biodiversity uh, is present in the nature and whatever the natural resources offered by the nature. Next, influence. Third one, through, through the collective strength of more than 1200 government and non-governmental member organizations, IUCN influences international environmental conventions, policies and Loss. So, uh, as we have discussed earlier, um, uh, it has almost 1,200 members, both the government and non-governmental uh, members or their organizations are there with IUCN. So, uh, this uh, uh, with them through their collective strength, IUCN tries to influence uh, international environmental conventions. Uh, and uh, uh, the policies made for uh, the um, uh, conservation of uh, biodiversity or natural resources. And it also influences the lawmaking. Uh, IUCN is the only 
uh, organization international organization which has the status uh, 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 that means it has uh, observer and consultative status at the united nations and it plays a crucial role in the implementation of several international conventions on nature conservation and biodiversity so it was involved in establishing the worldwide fund for nature that is wwf and the world conservation monitoring center uh, it is also the global authority on the status of the natural world and the measures needed to safeguard it so as we as i uh, mentioned earlier uh, it uh, it prepares an inventory of whatever the biodiversity the status of uh, um, the biodiversity present in the uh, world uh, the global level so it is best iucn is best known for its iucn red list of threatened species we'll see what is the red list of threatened species the logo of iucn red list is, uh, uh, is this one uh, iucn uh, red list of uh, threatened species or it is uh, it is uh, also called as red data list is the most comprehensive information source on the global conservation status of animals fungi and plant species so this was established in 19 64 uh, the world's most comprehensive inventory of the global conservation status of biological species so it maintains a list of all the um, uh, all the species and subspecies that are present uh, at uh, in the world and uh, their conservation status also whether they are uh, um, extinct or are they threatened or they vulnerable so their conservation status is also uh, they, they will mention in their inventory so uh, according to iucn uh, the latest in 2019 uh, report um, prepared by uh, iucn uh, red list of threatened species uh, currently there are more than 96900 species on the iucn red list and out of them more than 32000 are threatened with extinction uh, in uh, out of uh, these 32000 41% are amphibians 34% are coniferous coniferous that is um, gymnosperms and 33% of this 32000 are reef building corals and 26% of ma mammals and 14% of birds so out of them amphibians are uh, most threatened species and they are threatened with extinction uh, i use in red list of threatened species or uh, red data list is the world's most comprehensive information source on the global extinction risk of uh, status um, this is critical indicator of the health of the world's biodiversity uh, it also acts as a powerful tool to inform and persuade governments about necessary policy changes and conservation actions that can be taken to reduce the risk of extinction so whenever they find uh, um, any species or subspecies is threatened um of extinction then they will uh, immediately inform the governments or partner uh, organizations to take necessary policy changes uh, to conserve uh, that particular species and take uh, and take action to reduce their risk of extinction and it also iucn red list also provides information about range population size habitat ecology threats of plants and animal species worldwide uh, in their inventory what they will do is 
they will mention uh, what is the range of this particular species that means uh, their geological range and uh, population size that means uh, how many number of uh, that particular plant or animal species are present uh, existing currently and what are their natural habitat and what is their natural ecology and what uh, what are the threats uh, um, that plant or animal species is experiencing um, all these will be mentioned in that inventory that means in that red list book uh, IUCN has uh, the IUCN uh, red list is often referred as a barometer of life. Uh, in much the same way as a barometer measures atmospheric pressure to help us prepare for adverse weather conditions, in the same manner, the IUCN red list measures the pressures acting on species which guides and informs conservation actions to help prevent extinction so this is why the iucn red list is often referred to as a barometer of life this uh, iucn uh, red list uses a set of criteria to evaluate the extinction risk of thousands of species and subspecies these uh, criteria are relevant to more species and all regions of the world uh, that's how this uh, um, iucn has uh, categorized or classified species into um, nine groups uh, these are specified specified uh, through criteria such as uh, uh, the rate of extinction that uh, that is the rate of their decline their uh, population size uh, area of uh, geographic distribution uh, that means where they have uh, distributed on the world in the world and uh, degree of population and distribution fragmentation so these are the basis for classification or categorization so the these are the nine uh, groups that uh, IUCN has uh, classified all the species into nine groups right from uh, extinct uh, extinct to least concern so the uh, this is extinct uh, EW stands for extinct in the wild CR stands for um, critically endangered EN stands for endangered VU stands for vulnerable NT stands for not near threatened, LC least concern. Out of these nine, um, um, uh, 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 these are the nine, and these are uh, seven major uh, categories. These are nine categories uh, what IUCN has uh, um, uh, given. Uh, the last is data deficient uh, DD and not evaluated any. These are the nine groups. Okay, and out of these nine groups, the critically endangered, endangered, and vulnerable that is CR, EN, and VU are these the species under these three categories are considered as threatened categories and um, this is based on the extinction extinction risk of the population we'll see uh, we'll will let's study them one after the other extinct ex or extinct species means a taxon uh, it is said to be extinct when there is no reasonable doubt that the last individual has died that means no uh, no more species no more representative of this particular species is um, living today that means it's already dead and the moment of extinction is generally considered to be death of the last individual of the species although the capacity to to breed and recover may have been lost before this point so there is no scope for any 
um, capacity for it to breed or to recover. So then that species is considered as <coughs> extinct species. <coughs> Examples for extinct species are um, Alagos foliage gleaner, uh, and this is Dodo from uh, Mauritius. Uh, it's a um, it's a bird and. Uh, black rhinoceros from West Africa. And in uh, this is the Algos foliage gleaner. It was declared extinct in 2018. Next uh, is extinct in wild, uh, EW. This species is, uh, can be uh, considered as extinct in wild if through searches were dog conducted for its in the wild, it has not been seen in the wild over a period uh, that is appropriated for the life cycle. It can be only by living members kept in captivity. That means in the wilderness, they are no more um, seen, uh, but uh, uh, they can be uh, protected in through ex situ conservation. That means, whatever the remaining species are there, they are um, captured and uh, they are bred in uh, through ex situ conservation. That means captive breeding, in cra through captive breeding, uh, their uh, um, species is kept alive. So they, but they are not seen uh, in their original habitats. Okay, so that's why they are called as extinct in the wild. And, uh, Example for this is South China tiger and Socorro dove. Uh, it, uh, Socorro dove is uh, extinct in the wild since 1972. And uh, uh, Guam kingfisher, uh, this is extinct in the wild since 1986. Uh, Alaga, uh, Alagavis kurosawa is a bird species. It was extinct in the wild since 1988. So only the representative species are only um, placed uh, or only saved and they are kept in captive breeding and they are uh, maintained in um, ex situ conservation. Next, the third uh, category is critically endangered uh, species. Critically endangered species or CR species is one that is facing an extremely high risk of extinction in the wild. So in the natural habitat, because of many reasons, maybe because of poaching or um, trading or any other reasons, or maybe because of uh, uh, they're losing their habitat or any anthropogenic activities, these uh, uh, species are uh, facing an extremely high risk of extinction in their natural habitat. That's, those are called as critically endangered species. Uh, plants like uh, Mimosa moringa and Visia bifoliata um, and birds like silvery pigeon and great Indian bustard. Great Indian bustard in Telugu it is called as Batta Thalameka Pitta and uh, uh, animals like African wild donkey, eastern gorilla, Asiatic cheetah falls under this category. And uh, they are these uh, species are now their uh, um, uh, as they are critically endangered. Now governments are taking severe, uh, the, they are taking uh, stunning actions to protect them, protect uh, their species. So even in uh, Rollapadu in Nello district, uh, uh, there is one uh, uh, bird sanctuary especially for um, protecting this Indian, uh, great Indian bustard. The fourth category is endangered species. Endangered species is a species uh, and it face a very high risk of extinction in the near future. That means the number is, um, they're good in number, but because of various uh, um, man-made or natural, uh, 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 natural uh, have interferences, uh, these uh, species, uh, they're facing high risk and in few years, 
uh, they will uh, face the uh, they, uh, they are at high risk of extinction uh, example uh, blue whale snow leopard african wild dog tigers etc next vulnerable species we you are vulnerable species uh, vulnerable species is one which is likely to be endangered unless the circumstances that are threatening its survival or and reproduction improve underland unless we will improve uh, their uh, survival and uh, reproduction uh, circumstances they will soon become extinct they will uh, soon become endangered so that's why these species are called as vulnerable species uh, indian bison sambar deer and koala bear uh, nilgiri wood pigeon um, lions uh, all these uh, animals and uh, uh, they come under this category uh, currently there are uh, 5196 animals and uh, 6789 plants classified as vulnerable next is uh, near threatened or nt uh, a taxon is considered near threatened when it may be considered threatened in the near future so if their uh, ex uh, if their existence is threatened then these are called as threatened species example blue bill duck solitary eagle small clawed otter etc next uh, the seventh category is least concern that is a taxon is concern least concern when there is no immediate threat to the survival of the species uh, if uh, a taxon is considered as the, the data deficient when there is inadequate information to make a direct or indirect assessment of the risk of extinction based on their distribution or population status then that species is called as data deficient and not evaluated species that is the last category is if a taxon is considered not evaluated if it ha if has not yet been evaluated against the criteria so these are the nine criteria that are um, prescribed or uh, pre uh, it was developed by this uh, or um, devised by the iucn red data list so this is the recent uh, uh, iucn uh, red data list which is published and uh, see this is the recent one and the goals or uh, the immediate goal is uh, to uh, assess uh, by 2020 uh, the iucn red list um, the it want to uh, uh, it, it won't categorize uh, or it want to assess 1 lakh 60 thousand species by 2020 and uh, sp till now uh, it could assess uh, 1 lakh 20 thousand 372 species and uh, as on 5th of uh, august uh, that is today uh, one um, 39 uh, 268 uh, species uh, uh, remaining to reach their goal and 148 days are remaining uh, this is uh, the iucn red list uh, organization official website that is iucn red list dot org here these are uh, different tabs you can search for um, these are the amazing species uh, um, that are found were uh, um, put on their website and if you want to know about uh, this uh, this is how uh, it will give a brief uh, uh, background uh, uh, tells about their history uh, it is when it was established and uh, how it was established and uh, what is its um, the organization's aim and objectives and what does what are it uh, functions and all um, and this is uh, yeah this is why uh, this is called as barometer of uh, life and um, uh, 
list of uh, uh, partnerships this these are the list of uh, partners uh, IUCN International Union for Conservation of Nature and uh, the Species Survival Commission uh, Center for Biodiversity Outcomes BirdLife International Botanical Gardens Conservation International uh, Conservation International so there are many international organizations uh, which are partner with the uh, Kew Botanical Garden so these are uh, the different major organizations which are uh, in partnership with uh, this uh, red list uh, are you seen red list organization see recently in um, uh, they have uh, see uh, there are initially 2000 uh, this is called as red list consortium these partners uh, list is so uh, called as red list uh, consortium and uh, different sponsors are there to fund uh, uh, this organization mainly toyota motor corporation and uh, these are all the list of sponsors who are funding uh, this uh, nobel cause synchronicity earth the roofer foundation jrs foundation biodiversity foundation environment agency of uh, abu dhabi and moore foundation macarthur foundation so these are all foundations um, which are funding these uh, ma uh, the major funding organizations sponsors of this uh, cause and uh, this is uh, um, uh, assessment process see um, how what is assessment and uh, how this uh, species uh, biodiversity uh, or the different types of species uh, are assessed and uh, they are see this is pre-assessment assessment and it will be reviewed and there are uh, two uh, simultaneous steps and uh, lastly it will be uh, submitted and uh, it will be again um, uh, assessed further and last uh, uh, publication is uh, uh, the data is pub uh, published and uh, we'll see uh, how you can check um, the uh, whether any species is uh, what is the status of uh, uh, the species we'll just uh, we'll see We'll check with th this is a bar uh, where you can type the common name or a scientific name uh, of that particular uh, animal or plant species. And uh, just we'll see first see the lion. Lion. Uh, so if you don't know the um, uh, scientific name, also it's okay. You can just type your type the common name. See. Um, it will provide you with uh, the list of uh, species that start with the uh, lion see lion and that is panther leo and a lion tail macaque and hawaiian lionfish so we'll just see uh, the status of uh, the panther leo that is lion mm, here yeah lion see the in that bar like um, it is vulnerable species that is it, it's uh, it comes under threatened uh, species list it's vulnerable and uh, they will give the geographical range also see uh, in african continent uh, uh, the brown color is uh, it shows uh, that uh, that is where they are uh, resident so in these areas in these countries in these areas of uh, uh, African countries it is extinct and uh, look here the uh, the possibly extinct uh, in these areas like uh, here mm, so this is this is how geof geographical range of uh, uh, line is shown and here in the left side um, population trend will be shown it is the number is decreasing number of mature indi individuals uh, or 23,000 to 39,000. Mm, the habitat and ecology is forest, savanna, shrubland, and 
grassland so uh, everything about the species will be um, given what are the threats it was uh, that particular species or lions are face, uh, facing uh, residential and commercial development agricultural aquaculture so all these the threats for the decrease of uh, lion population so next uh, we'll uh, check for uh, another uh, a plant species that is red sanders uh, red sanders yeah red sandalwood pterocorpus santalinus yeah see see pterocorpus santalinus uh, the in the that's it comes under the category near threatened so it is anti near threatened and uh, if you look at the population trend it is decreasing and they have not given uh, the number of mature individuals the habitat actual habitat uh, and ecology is forest uh, look here uh, the extent uh, it is uh, the geographical range where it is uh, distributed is uh, uh, it is in indian south india it's uh, sesha chalam hills of tirupati vellore kanchipuram and uh, uh, pradhatur near pradhatur the uh, the forests in the nandiyala area so madanpalli area so this is uh, the uh, where it is located it is not located anywhere uh, else uh, and we'll just check so it's not uh, located in the nearby vicinity it's only in south india and that too in uh, uh, um, a uh, andhra pradesh and uh, uh, tamil nadu borders okay and we'll just see the threats um, for the decrease of this uh, this is uh, annual and perennial non timber crops agriculture and aquaculture and uh, logging wood harvesting and uh, these are the threats for this particular species we will check another species that is uh, uh, rhino rhino okay oh okay. black rhino ah oh, black rhino Diceros bicornis. So this is two-horned lion. I'm sorry, two-horned uh, uh, rhino. And uh, the status is it is critically endangered. This is critically endangered. Um, and uh, population trend is increasing. So um, number of mature individuals present in uh, at, um, present in the world are 3,142. Actual habitat is uh, savanna uh, shrublands and desert this is the geographical region in uh, african uh, countries ethiopia and uh, chad and niger and uh, nigeria is sudan in these country in these countries uh, the population is uh, its status is extinct but uh, if you look at zambia and south africa all this uh, they are reintroduced that means uh, through uh, exit to conservation they are reintroduced so they are resident and uh, extinct uh, here it is uh, in these countries uh, angola namibia uh, these the ones in uh, light yellow color um, these species now are uh, um, resident species here so the the possible threats for this is hunting uh, trapping terrestrial animals uh, human intrusions disturbances natural systems modifications uh, so all these are the threats likewise you can check for um, other uh, animals or uh, any animal or plant species we'll just uh, try with our um, one neem neem is uh, azadi rakta indica so we'll just see its uh, status see azadi rakta uh, so this is least concern so because this is a stable population so there are you you can say it's it's um, so there is no uh, concerned uh, that means we are not uh, we need not to uh, uh, it's not a threatened species so it's um, 
uh, least concern uh, so it's so it's all it's present in the geographical range this is the geographical range it is all spread in over in india so this is how uh, there are threats for this species to invasive and other uh, problematic species uh, and uh, uh, this is of unknown origin or the main threats uh, and uh, there is um, this is of least concern okay so this this is how you can check uh, the uh, uh, the status of uh, the any species whether it is plant species or animal species uh, you can check its uh, extinction status or its uh, concern status okay and uh, this these are other these are Mm, resources and uh, publications resources and publications so scientific papers and uh, related publications and all these things uh, this is uh, the IUC and red list threatened species and uh, at a glance see who uses it why is it uh, important red list categories and red list index and uh, how many species till today how many species are the latest uh, statistics uh, 112400 that is uh, 1,12,400 species plus plus species are assessed um, and out of them 30,000 plus are threatened and uh, by 2020 uh, IUCN wants to red list want to uh, assess 160,000 species see who uses it uh, e this uh, red list is used by international agreements uh, world bank group performance standards so government agencies zoos scientists teachers and students journalists for uh, their articles publishing their articles for information to write an article etc and um, next why it is important the importance of uh, this uh, IUCN and uh, see uh, this is uh, and uh, red list categories so that we have studied so right from um, not evaluated to extinct one two three four five six seven eight nine categories okay and uh, the red list index indexes uh, uh, the anthropogenic causes and all and uh, this the red list index uh, is available for groups in which all species have been assessed at least twice okay um, um, and currently the index is available for five groups birds mammals amphibians corals and cycads so this is about uh, the red list uh, um, IUCN red list the red list of threatened species and if you want uh, any information regarding any species you can just log in and uh, log into this uh, website and check uh, using uh, the common name or the scientific name of that particular species and you can know the the status of the threatened uh, status of that particular species